to the workshop and today we're going to be doing something on my van. No, not the new one, the old one. As you can see behind me, we got a list. Quite an extensive list. <clears throat> now with the up and coming show at Stratford upon Avon, which is the International Camper Van Show, if you want to go to that, I'll leave a link in the description below and book yourself some tickets. They're going fast. Um, the last one I was at was brilliant. I'll leave a link to the video that I done there, up above. And we're getting the van ready. There's loads of stuff needed doing on the van for so long. Just everything else has taken precedent over that and it's had a bit of a back seat. Anyway, as I will be selling this van, much to my disgust, but you know, you get attached to these vans. Don't tell me you don't, because I know you do. And everybody out there that's got their van, got a camper van, you will know what I mean. Right, so, list. This is the list of stuff that I need to do on Covey before Stratford upon Avon. There is a couple of other jobs to go on there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take you outside and show you what we've done to it so far because it's looking very sorry for itself and very empty. So let's go and have a look. Right, so let's start at the back of the van. Oops, I don't drink that much, that's been there for a while. Right, as you can see, the van is very, very empty. The van is that empty, I've even taken the batteries out. Um, there was a bit of a bird's nest of wiring up the end there. That's now been tidied up. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be putting down some more flooring in the back here because it's not finished up there. Um, this is too slippery and I have another idea which I will show you in the video. Up there was the heater control, voltage uh, monitor, temperature monitor, and this cheap Chinese solar charge controller. And we've taken the front of the van off. Um, this is all out under here. The reason it's a mess in the front here because this USB I put in failed to work. Now I use the existing wiring off of the cigarette lighter which is over there, which we are replacing. And one minute it worked, one minute it didn't and then when it did work, it couldn't even maintain the battery in my phone when the sat nav was on. It was there was it wasn't right. So what we've done, we've tapped into a live and put a fuse on it, and we've rewired it in, and it's working perfect. So the front grill's missing. Now, what we're going to be doing with the front of the van is put a few sparkly lights on there. I don't know what yet. I still haven't decided, but we're definitely going to put something on there and um, light the front up a little bit, maybe even do a bit of lighting on the back. We've got some on the below the tow bar on the back. Let me show you those. So if you look down here, they're looking a little bit old, but they still work and they're good. Uh, they are the orange beacons, flashing beacons. And um, we've got a plan for storage in the back here as well. We've got to finish these doors off. Um, this all needs to be tidied up. We're going to be doing something different for storage for these. So yeah, we've got quite a lot of work to do before the uh, International Camper Van Show. And everything from the van is in the back of the new van. Look at it all. So we've been busy. We don't sit around doing nothing. So another little toy we bought and got for the van It's a generator. You're probably wondering, why do we need a generator? Well, again, that's for the show. Because um, we are going to have a trade stall there. And we've got other ideas going on at the show that we need that generator and possibly another one as well. Right, so, we need to crack on with this and get going. 
And it's one of those jobs I'm thinking, I've got so many on the list, where do I start? I can't put the batteries in because the new batteries have been on order. Uh, the old batteries are down there on charge. Now, I thought the batteries had had it, but they haven't. Um, just needed a good charge, but I've ordered two new ones anyway. I've got two, hundred, two 135 amp hour AGM batteries. And they're going to go back in the van. Um, as you may have seen in some of my other videos, we have got... Let's go in. If you've seen in some of my other videos, you will see that I've got a full-size fridge freezer in here. Now, that fridge freezer is one of the Inlander fridge freezers. And this is actually to go in the big bus. We just put it in here temporarily. But we do have on order a small undercounter version of the Inlander fridge. Um, hopefully we'll be doing a review on that at the show or at some point. Um, so that fridge has got to come out, a small one's got to go in. We also need to finish off this cupboard. Um, we need to finish off this wall here. So yeah, lots to do. Obviously where I took the panel off of here, um, that had all the um, controls on, we are fitting a new panel bit of wood because they all had holes in it. So that's already been cut and painted. So we need to fit that back up. Um, oh, it's looking a mess, look at it. does get to me when it starts to look like this but it's all for a good reason and it will look good when it's done I know it will anyway um so yeah also one other job we've got these um strip lights on both sides and over there as well they all need to be wired up so there's a lot of unfinished work on this van to do and I want to get it done for the show and then I'll be a lot happier We've also got an electric hookup point, but there's nothing on the end of it. So we're going to put fit a consumer unit on that, put that in and put a plug socket in. So when I say there's lots to do, I really mean there is lots to do. And it's knowing what job to start on first. Right, when I've decided what I'm doing first, I'll come back to you and show you what I'm doing. Right, okay, so first job of the day is going to be fitting the consumer unit. Now, I've chosen to use one by Chint. And what I've had to do is it comes with the RCB and the MCBs. So these now are both 16. There was a 16 and a 6 in there. But I've replaced that one with a 16. You're probably asking <coughs> why we're we having two 16 amp uh, fuses in there. I'm having one socket, one double socket, which will be under the bed at the front. That's gonna be on one of these um, trip switches. And the other one will be on a charger for the battery. So I have a C-Tech charger. Um, what I'll do is I'll go and get that and show you what will be hooked up to this as well. So then this will be a, so when we plug into shore power, it will charge the batteries up on the van and also provide us with power to 240. I don't have an inverter in there. I didn't want an inverter. There was no reason for having an inverter. That is literally just um, more so we've got an, a socket if we need. And in that van, we don't need a socket, but it's there if we do need it. Let me go and get this C-Tech charger, show you what it is we're hooking up to this as well. Then you'll know exactly what we're doing. So the C-Tech charger is this one here. You basically connect it and forget it. But it also has this comfort monitor which we bought separate. Uh, apparently you can connect the two up together. I've never used this before. It's the first time for everything. But hey, we've got to give it a go. Right, so we're gonna take the consumer unit up over to the van and install that, fix it to the wall of the van. I know exactly where it's gonna go. It's gonna go right by the electric hookup point where the wire comes in. Connect that up and then get the plug socket, the wiring, and we'll install that as well. And not forgetting the nice new C-Tech charger and comfort monitor. Right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the consumer on here. Um, yep, I'm gonna fix it to this. 
and the wire from the electric hookup point will go up into the consumer unit. I am actually might actually put it here right above it so it goes right up in there and shortens this wire. <clears throat> so yeah, probably put it there. So this will sit there. Right, so that is the consumer unit wired up. So it's all in there, all wired. I just now need to wire up the charger and the plug socket. And if you're attempting to do anything like this yourself, ensure that you get it checked by a qualified electrician. The fact that you're plugging in to a shore power or some power supply which is 240 volts you need a qualified electrician to ensure this is completely safe although I'm doing this myself somebody will be checking this and making sure that it's all okay and all right and safe to use before I even decide to plug anything on the outside so please take these warnings seriously and it's only recently a um, some friends that I know of mine, um, friends through the van life community and different meets we've been to have lost their van through a tragic fire um, and the last thing I want to hear is anybody else suffering the same problem. Luckily their lives weren't in danger as far as I'm aware, they weren't in the van, it was an electrical fault and it was the middle of the night or during the night this happened and their van was parked at home so you know somebody was definitely looking over them that night but just remember that's how dangerous electric electrics can be and that wasn't even a 240 volt that was just a 12 volt that i can make of it that could have caused that fire so yeah um a big shout out to you paul and sue and hope everything's okay right back to this so now we need to figure out um, getting in the bits and pieces that we want to get into this and then um, wiring them up. Right, so what I've got to do is get some cable from there. It's got to go under the bed and around the bed where the heater exhausts out by the fridge over there. Or should I say heat pumps out by on that piece of wood I want my 240 volt socket to be. So to do that we've got to feed the wire in and pin it all around the edge first and once I've done that I'm going to leave the wire hanging there because I need to get a plug socket 
and a back box for it to make it safe. So let's get the wiring, get the wire clipped up, <clears throat> make life a lot easier for myself. So yep, I'm under the bed here still. And there's the wire hanging down. And it goes all the way around there and out the front. Sorry, out the back. And now I need to wire that into one of those 16, 16 amp fuses. <coughs> Right, it might seem we're doing a lot of bitty jobs on the van at the moment. It's because we're missing bits and pieces and parts. So, you're right, we are. Right, another item we need to fit to the van today is this. Now, this is an isolator switch, and it's a dual pole isolator switch. And this will be placed in the solar panel line. Um, between the solar panels and the solar charge controller. The reason being is at some point in time I might need to isolate the solar panels and this is the little toy that will do it. So let's take it apart. So literally you've got an in and an out. As simple as that. So you have two wires in and two wires out. Let's go and fit this then. Right, so here's all the solar panel wires hanging out the cupboard there. So what I'm gonna do, I am gonna fit that isolator at the back of the cupboard here. And it, for me it makes sense because all of these wires come to this point. And the reason they come to here, because my solar charge controller used to be there. This cheap Chinese piece of, mm. but it done well. It's done a really good job. <clears throat> Being a Victron dealer, I had to put Victron in, as you well know. So that will be going, <clears throat> probably fitting in tomorrow because I still haven't got the batteries yet. And until I know the size of the batteries, where they're gonna go, what I'm gonna do with them, I don't know where to put the solar charge controller. But for now, the isolator's gonna go in this cupboard, just here. Right, so let's. Right, so we are going to put this here. Mm. No, I'm going to have a change of plan. We're going to go to the other side. Change of plan. Over this side here. Because all the wires seem to come out of that way. If you notice, on one of these wires, I put a red heat shrink. Reason being, these solar panel wires come in black and black only. So putting that red heat shrink on there, we now know which is the positive and which is the negative. Now the two wires in there at the moment go to the battery. And that will now be screwed up to there. 
um, and that will go in there. So what we'll do now is put the panels and the wires, we'll cut them down to size and they'll fit them underneath. And I know I've got bare wires on the end of this people, but don't worry because I have disconnected the solar panels from the wires. So we're gonna get no so remember, if you've worked with your solar panels and you've got an isolator or anything, always remember to unplug your solar panels first. Right, again, I'm going to put a heat shrink on the positive, which is this one. There's the label there it says, I oh know it's upside down, but it says solar panel pos. Before we put that, those wires in for the positive and negative on the bottom, I'm going to screw this to the wall up there. Sorry about that, the battery died on the camera. Right, all we've got to do now is place the negative. Let's do that one up. So that's now in place. All we've got to do is put the cover on. Right, so another job I wanted to do on this for so long, but have never actually done it, is put lights underneath the bed uh, in the garage area. So the lights we're going to be using are going to be these puck lights. Now they'll sit quite flush under the bed, won't get in the way. I was going to use LED strips that lights up the whole surround, but to be honest with you, these are fine. I don't know whether to put them on the side or to put them on under on the bed slats. To be honest with you, I think the bed slats would be better. Um, so I just need to measure these up, get all the wires around the right sort of length, and um, solder all the wires together. Right, now we've got to fix the lights to that beam.
Right, so. There's the lights. And all the cables are cable tied to the side, so they're nice and tidy. I've just got to do this end. And we also need to fit a switch in by the doors to the back. Right now, so we've got to drill a hole for this switch to go in. I started it. All we've got to do is put the rest of the cables in now. Tomorrow up. Right, so we're day two of the upgrades on Covey. And the batteries are here. We have some lights to put on. The battery connectors are here. Some more C channels here. We're doing loads of bits and pieces. First of all, I want to get the batteries out, put the batteries in, and figure out where we're going to actually put the batteries. Because I'm thinking about relocating them. I thought about putting the batteries on the floor here, instead of up there. But I don't know. Right, before I put those batteries in, I'm actually, I've actually decided to put them on the floor. Um, I've got some new flooring to put in the back. So what we're going to do, I'm going to do that first and um, then put the batteries in afterwards. That's the good thing about this camera. One angled. <clears throat> right. So we are using, we call it jigsaw matting. Um, but you can buy it from Halfords, and I know people use this to put under hot tubs, uh, in garages, literally all sorts of places. Where well, this is going in my garage.
Right, so we've done really well on this so far. There you go, <clears throat> there's some of it. I'm going to show you where the batteries are now. There you go, they're right over there on the floor. Um, the bits of wood are there temporarily, they're not being screwed in as yet. Also, that will be boxed in, so the terminals are protected from any um, metal objects falling on them. So be, that'll be boxed in once it's finished. Uh, the box will be easily removable just by removing a couple of screws. And at the moment, I am working on this board here. So the CTEC charger is going to sit at the top. The MPPT is going to be put here. And I'm going to try and put a couple of buzz bars on here as well. If not, they'll be mounted on something else or somewhere else. Right, so now we've put the bus bars, MPPT and the battery charger onto a little board. And that's as big as it needs to be. So negative comes out there, positives come out of there. Solar wires go into these two and the uh, two wires come out here. One go into this side, one go to this side. The charger cable wire will feed and go to one to this side and one to this side. So yeah, the only other thing I need to put on is the battery isolator switch, which is in the other side of the cupboard under the sink, so it's easy to get at to isolate those batteries. The isolator for the isolator for the solar panels we fitted already, and you've seen. So yeah, it's looking good. Right, so there you have it, my electronics panel as I would call it. So there's your bus bar for the positives, bus bars for the negatives, We've got the MPPT, and the shore power charger for the batteries when we're hooked up. <clears throat> so yeah, what I need to do now is fix these batteries in place and build a box cover for it. So at least when I'm storing stuff in, no metal objects are gonna short out the terminals. Once I get my big battery crimper back, then we'll be wiring it all back up but that would be in probably next few days because i'm away for a couple of days yeah i'm away again so we need to get this sorted right i've just thrown a little bit of the awning rail up there just up here so the awning rail now runs the full length of the van so we can get a four meter sunshade awning up there Right, first of all, we can take off the Victron charger. We can take off the two batteries which are in there. Finished cupboard and fridge, no. Rear doors, no. Steril uh, sterilize the water tanks, we've done that. And we've done the C channel. So the list is looking a lot smaller. I think the next one we're going to tackle is probably going to be the exterior lighting and maybe even the steps for the bed. Steps would be a good one. We'll do that one first. 